Okay, so moving to the contents. So on first we'll be talking about scope of study, which is the introduction. Then next we'll be talking about biosecurity and disease preventive measures. Then we'll also be talking about feeding, about brooding, about vaccination. This vaccination is going to be a, a um an emphasis on because part of it will be spoken on in biosecurity and disease preventive measures. Then responsibility of farmers in disease control. So on um, on recap of previous lecture we remember we should recall we talked about that was last week introduction at least just a brief history very brief history on no like chicken then the importance the essence in the community and why they are relevant considering with, re- with respect to the economics of the country as at the moment then also the appearance we spoke on the appearance we spoke on feeding requirements on their feeding requirements and their growth rate where when they attain uh, maturity we also spoke on their productivity in egg in terms of egg and meat production which are the most important reasons why they are kept then I spoke about their hatching and peculiarities of their hatching, then their housing and peculiarities, then the veterinary care needed. So we'll basically be talking on on this we like expounding on this veterinary care today. Please stay tuned. So next we'll be talking on biosecurity and disease preventive measures. Then it's important for us to note that biosecurity is the most cost effective means of disease prevention as we remember and we always know that prevention is better and always cheaper. Not just better, always cheaper than cure. So under this under biosecurity there are three major arms which we will consider in the first is isolation, second is traffic control and the third is sanitation. I would want to start discussing on sanitation first and the choice of sanitation products depends depend on cost, transport and degree of operation. So this cost, transport and degree of operation determine the co- the choice of sanitation products. Then also which is also important to know that sanitation products involve or encompass products like phenols, the hypochlorites, and the common example is the household bleach, the like hypogic and the likes. Then we have hydrophores, we have alkali or dyes, we have chlorhexidine, we have formaldehyde, which comes in gas or in liquids or powder, and the common most people know it's commonly as form um, formalin, but they are formaldehydes. Then we have quaternary ammonium compounds. So, and one thing is very important, please, in your use and if you to get direction and professional direction, please consult with your vet to know which product should be used and when to use it and how to use it. Don't just use any product because it may not give you what you need and it may give you something more than what you expect so please let's take that into consideration so also um prevention okay now i would want to also talk about um prevention of contact with the need for prevention of contact with wild or free-ranging beds and other disease vectors such as rats, rodents, snakes, and the likes. And it's important to know that some of these disease vectors try maybe they get involved or get in contact not with the beds but with the feet, and they maybe deposit one pathogen or the other. Which one by the time we give the feet, the feet to the beds, the beds gets like taking consume the ingest the pathogens then they come down this is so there will be needs for need for pest controls in that's if in to that effect then also there is need for early disease detection and immediate action please this is very very important the moment you see anything of going on in your farm 
immediately consult your vet because it could be something that you could maybe decide to sleep over it and at the end of the day you see it wiping out half or more than half of your farm stock so please try and always work on this part yeah so i omitted earlier that isolation is very very important in biosecurity in the sense that whenever you are seeing any bed or any stock like acting strangely or funny maybe you are seeing some abnormal signs you immediately take it out of the other stock so that it doesn't um, have to spread an infection or something then also if you are getting or introducing new stock probably you have some already on ground they are just purchasing some you want to add them please always quarantine them for minimum of two weeks let them stay separately and then before and maybe you give them some prophylactic treatments like antibiotics and likes and multivitamins just for them to be um just for them to at least be observed and you are, and you be sure that they are not bringing in any infection into your farm before you mix them with you with the already the already owned stocks you have so the um next slide we look at at least still under the biosecurity and these preventive measures the last thing under biosecurity is limitation of man movements that which is also which can also be regarded as traffic control and this entails some points here we see the first is um a kind of signage like you create gates at an access point to the farm to discourage or prevent unauthorized entry the investors and service providers to the farm should wear overalls and boots provided by the farmer you that's yourself then provision of foot what foot washing baits at the entrance of each shed if you'll be having more than a shed for disinfection and like i said earlier in sanitation there'll be a need to get at least a very potent disinfectant which is also a sanitary product sanitation product that you keep in the foot ba- foot dips or foot baits then vehicle movement to the farm should be minimized and vehicles or equipment that may have visited other farms should be required to be washed washed before entry into the farm then people who are or vehicles must move between farms on the same day without a thorough we sorry we have people or vehicles we move we have to move between, between farms on the same day without thorough disinfection between farm visits movements are scheduled that in such a way that the youngest flocks should be visited first and the oldest flocks should be visited last like if there's more than maybe the same distant farm complex and you have to be going from one point to the other if there's going to be need for to be going from one point to another and there won't be time or for disinfection the f- younger ones should be visited first then the older ones should be visited last because the the concept is that the older ones have more immunity and if you are taking anything to them they can best like they can better deal with some of those things compared to the younger ones that's the scope then finally we're talking about disease prevention which entails like as listed general's boundary general's boundary just has to do with you getting and you making sure at every time you have healthy beds so it's all it just entails every activity targeted at having healthy beds all the time you're giving them good food you're giving them good water you're giving them more vitamins and the likes then it also that's balance that also is very important then the next thing there is stock selection that's that means you're getting a very good genetic line from your artery or whatever is your chick source or probably your bed sto- your stock source you're getting good and 
wonderful um, genetic lines so at least you are also going to be sure that yes you are dealing with pure neural lines because there are several counterfeits and the, this this neural farming is a very very it's it's a it's a very very tampered business because many people sell local for noilas and it's they sell at the price of noila so you have to be very careful to buy from reputable suppliers or arteries then also it also involves vaccines there'll be slide here that's i think about the second to last slide that i'm talking about this vaccination the list of vaccines that will be needed then vaccines are very very important please and it's important for you to note that you'll be needing as much vaccines as you need for normal layer production when you're talking about normal layer production you need so this next slide on feeding just like i said earlier the basic concept is balanced diet because all you need to give your your beds to for them to have the right immunity the right desired immunity strength and to at because like like it's commonly said it's garbage in garbage out whatever i put your input like in a way corresponds to in every way corresponds to your output so if you want the optimal optimum production in terms of meat and egg you need to give in the best in your feeding this is very important and for them to live and maintain healthy lives they need to be fed very well so next is brooding and brooding entails like especially if you'll be getting from day old then you want to keep them if you are the if you want to maybe give a contract you want to contract the brooding to a vet farm or something you can go ahead but if you are interested in bringing them up yourself the brooding has applied in normal broiler um situation where you need warmth the provision of warmth the provision of security whether you are providing warmth maybe by trampoline by um high energy water bulbs lanterns heat sources all those all those are very important because you would they have they are very um, very high possibilities of having mortalities at the early stage of lives of the of the chickens lives if exposed to extreme weather conditions that's too hot or too cold so the brooding just entails you regulating and giving them the best and optimum temperature um temperature environment they need for their growth then at the required point you are at some point at the required point where you need to now take it away or reduce your brooding maybe remove the trampoline remove the heat source and the likes i mean or reduce the heat source i mean yes so um this next slide on vaccination speaks on um the, the just a list of vaccines recommended or needed to administer to your bed considering the fact that they could be spending um up to three months if you want them for meat production then up to five months at least five months you want them for egg produ production and you need marex vaccine um lasuta gumburu and um Fowpox vaccines that's just basically that you don't even need to come up so at the end of the day score and by the time your vet reaches out and helps you with the regimen you get enlightened and discover you don't need the cumbersome vaccination um frequencies maybe like give this vaccine twice that you don't need that you don't need all that just a very short thing and you are good to go with your production for up to two years as as is the case with egg production you can have up to two 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 years then also you just like i said please consult your vet for the uh, don't just take anything and just give anything because at the end of the day your vet could tell you something is not necessary and why some are necessary mm -hmm. so please thank you very much then finally the last but not the least 
responsibility of farmers in disease control. All this just talks about is caution against indiscriminate use of drugs. Now, there's a concept called antimicrobial resistance, and it entails the fact that sometimes, maybe because of the indiscriminate and um, the wrong use of, that's what word, wrong use of antimicrobials or antibiotics, as it's commonly known, there are times where the antibiotics that are now needed for particular infections won't work because they've been abused in the past and these organisms have modified genetically to develop into what they call what is called superbugs that will never get affected by the drugs when they are used on them on these organisms later on so please we need to watch that then another issue is the fact that there is what they call withdrawal periods please we need to also observe that for every drug that is administered withdrawal periods are always stated whether on such it on the bottles of the drugs and please we need to observe that because if we don't observe the withdrawal periods there are some residues of the drugs that are still in the meat even when the beds are slaughtered once or whatever farm animals it may be once humans ingest, they ingest those drug residues, which later on with time pose threats of to this antimicrobial resistance. So please let's this is our own responsibility. Let's make sure we use the drugs and every drug with the consent and the advice, like with the directive, professional directive of the vet. That's stating the use, the di- the um, the adequate or the right use, the right drug, the right dosage. Thank you very much for your time.